Hey guys, uh, it's Chase with csjoseph.life. I have no idea if you can hear me, but this is How to Type Famous People, April 2020. We're going to be talking about uh, Jordan Peterson, as well as whatever uh, famous people uh, you folks decide uh, is basically, you know, hey, you will want to type this person because I'm paying you a super chat. So it's like, okay, sure. Uh, but yeah, be aware of that. That's kind of what's going on. Uh, how's my sound coming in? I'd really like to know. And I'm also going to do a sound test with like YouTube so you can actually hear what I'm actually playing because I'm trying to make sure I'm doing this correctly. So uh, let me know in the stream chat if you guys can like actually hear me. Can. Okay, cool. You can hear me. Yay. That's awesome. So... All right, well, a plethora of me has already cast her vote saying he's an INTP. That's uh, interesting. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so did I. I thought we also established that. But the audience has demanded that we verify Mr. Jordan Peterson. So that's kind of like the direction that uh, it's there. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I've been having a lot of audio issues recently. I think it's like a, because of the move uh, and whatnot as to why that had happened. So... All right, uh, let's adjust that there. And then um, I'm gonna get this here. Um, and uh, let me, I need to actually get into um, Discord real quick. Let me see where that is as well. Pulling up some Discord. Gonna look at the uh, Type Challenge channel. And I'm going to tell Discord to leave my sound alone so I don't screw it up midway through. All right, so challenge typing discussion. And let's see here. Let's go to where we started up with the uh, Jordan Peterson thing. Okay. Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson. How many of you guys have read his book? Um, uh, some guy liked to tell me that MBTI is BS. Prove me wrong. I, I can't prove him wrong. I, I, I just can't. Uh, so, okay. Um, I think that's where it starts. I'm going to move this window over here. And then uh, we'll get into screen sharing in a second here. As I adjust it here. All right, awesome. Um, cool. I think we're ready to go. So let's uh, let's share the screen and get the get going here. Screen share button. Awesome. Okay, so uh, our challenge typing for uh, this particular episode, and the reason why is because every now and then I get asked to like verify certain people and you know what their what their type is, etc. Because people disagree with me as to you know how I've typed them, so uh, I uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, we'll just open up the show tonight with Jordan Peterson, and then we'll get to everyone's uh, super chats, of course. Um, but yeah, so there's like, is this a trick typing session? Okay, yeah, I totally get that. Um, it seems pretty bad at FE though, or is that just me? Okay, interesting. Kataro's got some opinions here. Um, reprogramming is in here. Uh, he literally has a cult of personality and is very emotionally expressive. For example, an INTP would not have the presence he has or be able to elicit the kind of emotional manipulation he is successfully pulling off. All right, Mr. Reprogramming, like, have you like paid any attention to Bill Gates, especially recently? Bill Gates is very emotionally expressive. He comes off like like an old grandma trying to tell you how to live your life, uh, while simultaneously, you know, it's all for like the sake of the good. It's all it's all about the good thing, even though simultaneously, Bill Gates like basically owns Monsanto and is also pushing the UN ID twenty twenty agenda crap. So, I mean, hey, I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess, I guess it sounds good, right? I, I guess it sounds good, but you know, who knows? Um, so, uh, yeah, okay, so we got people saying he's INTP, ENTP. Um, so far, anyone else put in their judgments in here? Um, uh, INFJ is another person's vote. Uh, 
Uh, a greedy SP intellectual NTP, according to the audience here. Uh, Chase typed him as INTJ. Oh, he's talking about IDubs. No, I'm not talking about Jordan Peterson. Um, okay, I think they said INTP, ISTJ. So, I mean, I guess the standard narrative has been like somewhat accepted, but uh, we'll see how that goes. So, who knows? And uh, yes, uh, for the uh, for the sake of this particular episode and every episode, after we have this chart that we're going to be using to kind of make it easier with visual aids, um, recently we released the Ultimate Messaging Formula, which is at theultimatemessagingformula.com. And if I remember correctly, I think we're going to have a sale on that in the near future. If not already, I don't know. I think it's like half off right now. Um, although early bird is still technically a better price than, than it being half off now. But if you guys want to get on that, if the sales on now or not, I, I don't know. Um, apparently I'm just bad at business, you know, because I, you'd, you'd think that, you know, I, I would know that, but, uh, uh, but regardless, uh, ultimate messaging formula will be half off, uh, for people. If you guys want to still pick that up, it teaches you how to like to sell the people. It also teaches a little aspect of social engineering, but in my opinion, the best uh, value add of Ultimate Messaging Formula is to teach you guys how to type yourselves and others using little worksheets and little companion materials that comes with the new and updated type grid, which was leaked to the public recently. So, uh, but these symbols here are taken directly out of the Ultimate Messaging Formula, and we're gonna be using it from now on to basically, you know, type famous people with, because this is our new little chart, and uh, it's a lot easier doing it this way and getting the uh, audience familiar with the appropriate symbols for psychoanalysis analysis, etc. So that's what we're going to be working on um, as uh, as we move forward in this direction here. So, but yeah, how is my health today? My health is rough every day, uh, but uh, I could uh, figure it out. So, but awesome. Um, no, only a certain page of it was leaked, not the whole thing. Um, so cool. All right, let's uh, let's test whether or not we can actually hear a YouTube video. So let's do some Jordan Peterson videos. Uh, Jordan Peterson interview. Let's check this out. Um, uh, debate on gender uh, pay gap, campus protests, and postmodernism. Uh, that's that one famous video. Uh, okay, we could do that. Um, there's plenty of motivation to take me out. It didn't work. Um, emotional interview with Patrick Bet David. Okay. Uh, my dog is an ENTP. Yes, very much. My dog is uh, definitely an ENTP. You know, I'm going to see if I can adjust the camera a little bit different here. Uh, let's try. Is that going to work? No, that does not work. Um, hmm. Does that work? No. What about that? No. No. I'm going to go back to this one. It's all I got, so I'll just kind of, you know, get over myself and uh, go for, go with it from there. So, awesome. All right, let's uh, let's get the show on the road. Fire it up. How much responsibility do you feel that you have, particularly guys? The can you guys hear this? Like, I really need to know if you guys like can hear this. Like, tell me. Oh, right. Who, as you say, some of them have enjoyed your work and say, no, I'm not one haven't. of I'm not one of you guys. No, they haven't. No, no, they haven't. Like T.I. Correction. No, no. Um, does that mean you can't get along with your dog, Chase? Yes, it kind of it kind of means that <laughs> it kind of means that. Yes, I cannot get along with my dog. How did you know? <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> yes you guys can hear me thank god and you can hear it awesome all right now now i'm my si inferior insecurity is gone and we can actually like have a show now so thank god all right add a type jp what is the result uh he just made a ti statement so ti is right here so he has one point for sword and mace. If you're a TI user, you are also automatically an FE user by default, so TI, FE. So let's get, let's get going. Yes, I'm not with you guys. They haven't enjoyed my work. I've definitely read bits on the internet. Read more. Read more of my work. Gosh, he's like so direct at that moment, but I think he's like cognitive transitioning. But I'm gonna put a point down for direct because why the hell not? Read more. <laughs> very TI, 
you know, that's a very strong, optimistic DI. Read more of my work. <laughs>《Sold 2 million copies of 12 Rules for Life. You have 800,000 followers on Twitter, 1.4 million followers on YouTube. What is Look at how stoic Mr. Jordan Peterson. He's just sitting there. He's like a stone. He's like, meh. I'm just like, I mean, like, okay, yeah, sure. I'm just going to like sit here, you know, I'm not going to care because I really don't care about what you're saying at all. I really don't care because I'm a TI user. A really high TI user, but I don't care. So yeah, I'm just gonna sit here like a stone. Okay, uh, one point for outcome if you're sitting there like a stone and not flailing about like a la like a madman like myself. You know what I'm saying? So let's keep going. What is it that you're selling that so many people want to buy? I don't think I'm selling anything. Well, I went to. A I don't think I'm selling anything. Oh, a TIFE statement. Pop. Gosh, I love this guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, my friends give me so much crap for liking this guy. But don't forget, folks, I still maintain that Jordan Peterson is absolutely a globalist. And I'll be honest, I'm not down for globalism. But a lot of people disagree with me when I say that he's a globalist. But yeah, he's a globalist. I mean, come on. Uh, look, Just look at his friends and his little actions that he takes at the UN. You know what I'm saying? I wonder if him and Bill Gates are real tight. Wait a minute. If they're the same type, then I guess they're not real tight, are they? a show where you were where you were selling tickets to your show so people are willing to pay a lot of money to see you speak you know what is it that you think that people are hungry for they want to hear from you they are hungry for a discussion of the relationship between responsibility and meaning they're hungry for the response for the discussion between the responsibility and meeting another another ti uh statement and uh i'm gonna put down a point for earth and water expert intuition uh, because expert intuition, when you're usually discussing meaning, it's usually expert intuition when you're looking at it in terms of like what everybody else is seeing. Uh, although the meaning can also be directly applied to FI and NI at certain times. But the context of this particular con uh, uh, conversation, because he's talking about people in general, not really making it about the self. Uh, it's more of an expert intuition thing. Don't forget, guys. Certain words and certain phrases can still mean multiple things in terms of the cognitive functions. We see this all the time. Like that's like super normal. So like don't get confused when that happens. All right. So why is that? Remember, this is four sides dynamics. This the, the name of this science. We're calling it four sides dynamics. It is a dynamic. It is not. Uh, it's not something static. So get your heads out of this inductive reasoning static thing and get your heads into the deductive reason, deductive reasoning dynamics thing and you'll be far more successful uh, within uh, this form of psychology. Uh, so let's, uh, let's keep going. Thank you, uh, Brandon Demery. Uh, I really appreciate it. And also thank you guys for the super chats. Uh, since the crisis has gone down, um, uh, any financial assistance you could provide us like seriously helps. It's like a big deal. So... Thank you. And um, we haven't had that discussion in our culture for 50 years. We've concentrated on rights and privileges and freedom and impulsive pleasure. and Those are all useful in their place, but they're shallow and that's not good because if people are moored shallowly, then storms wreck them. Uh, you know, and that's that's shallow and that's not good. And then because of people more shallow, then, then it does this. That's that's more TIFE, a serious, uh, lots more TIFE statements as a result. But he also provided an extrovert intuition consequence. Don't forget, NE is aware of consequences. This is why if you're an SP type, uh, you don't have expert intuition because it's a trickster or like a demon. And when you don't have expert intuition, you're not aware of the consequences of your actions. This is why... Uh, SPs have a very interesting relationship with causality, but then this is why SPs also call SJs like super afraid and whatnot, because like when they're all afraid, uh, uh, you know, it's because they're afraid of consequences. That's why I have expert intuition as an inferior function or expert intuition as a child function. There's a higher fear factor there in terms of SI parent and SI hero, and that's why, right? So keep that in mind. All right, so... And, and that was also an abstract statement he just did there. 
uh, with the extrovert intuition as well. Thank you for uh, bringing that up, Mr. Boff Boz. When storms come along, so I'm talking to people about how they can build a foundation underneath them. Wow, Parsi, thank you very, very much. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, I, very, very much. And that works. And, and, uh, Oh, and, and that works. And uh, it started going to like, maybe like a little bit of an effie inferior uh, statement, but he also was talking about what works in that particular moment, pragmatic. And that was also systematic of him to say as well. Let's move on to a different interview. Actually, let's, let's, let's go a little bit People further. People need to know that because otherwise their lives are harder than they need to be. What? They need to know that because otherwise their lives are harder than they need to be. Okay, that's another expert intuition abstraction talking about the consequences of their actions. That's also another TIFE statement. Okay, yes, he's obviously a crusader. Jordan Peterson is obviously a crusader. He's just sitting there like a stone. He's outcome. He's very responding in that. So responding and outcome. He is being a bit informative. He's providing additional information to the interviewer that she's not even asking for per se, even though he's responding and responding sometimes. Uh, you stick to the context of the conversation, but when you're informed and responding, sometimes you can go outside the context, but within within still staying within your lane, etc. So thank you, Underwater, as well. Uh, that was a pretty cool uh, GIF, kumquat, mic drop thing, I think. <laughs> it's looking like Jordan Peterson's an INTP, guys, like I said originally, uh, but let's go to a different interview. The American working class paid a very large price for enriching the rest of the world. Is there such a thing as 100% truth? You can get a bloody long ways by being honest. You can get a bloody long ways by being honest. Yes, that is T-I-F-E, that statement. Also, when it comes to like being honest, I would like to quote another T-I hero, ISTP. Um, and this is... Uh, a father of an ESTP I know. Uh, and he said, quote, never underestimate the power of stating the obvious. Folks, this is something very important. Remember, it's far more valuable to state the truth regardless of the consequence of the truth. Even if you are at the end of a gun barrel, it's still more valuable to tell the truth. Uh, because that's the truth is technically something worth dying for. And I think Jordan Peterson is very well aware of that. We really have no idea what they're doing to us. These aren't trivial technologies, you know. Some of the belief system that we have politically, liberal or conservative, we're born with. It's not the fact that the conservatives are right or that the liberals are right. They're both necessary, annoying as that is. Trigger warnings clearly. Oh, they're both necessary, as annoying as that is, yes. Opposing ideologies. That's an expert intuition standpoint. He's talking about the balance of yin and yang. Uh, and uh, that is also another abstract uh, statement. Fantastic. Okay, let's really make things worse. There's a lot of Latinos in the room here. Were you trying to encourage us to go out there and have 10 babies? You're trying to say <laughs> they will make 10 babies in a heartbeat if you say that. Who had an absolutely dread? Wow, that guy is like almost like racist. That was like a racist statement. Come on. morning and it's just as bitchy as can possibly be imagined. That's kind of what... Bitchy is what possibly can be imagined. Yes, another point for pragmatic. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is pretty cool. Let's, uh, let's go a little bit deeper. Um, let's see here. ...on order and, and, and move towards beauty, and that's unbelievably useful because while well, beauty calls people to their higher being, I would say, and to make friends with beauty is all right newsflash i actually got into a debate with my infj mentor recently and uh about jordan peterson and he vehemently vehemently maintained jordan peterson was an enfj and like i looked at him and i'm like dude no he is not an enfj he's not an enfj he's an intp man come on Use the stuff you actually taught me and stop, like, you know, outsourcing your TE trickster to, like, stuff that you read on the internet, bro. No. He's not an ENFJ. But then again, to be fair to my INFJ mentor, he doesn't exactly uh, spend very much time listening to Jordan Peterson. Because, honestly, tell me, which INFJ would? 
And also, which INFJ would if potentially their extroverted feeling parent is underdeveloped and they're walking around with TI child God complex and thinking that they have it all figured out, right? So I think it would be easy for an INFJ to actually come to the conclusion that Jordan Peterson is an ENFJ. So anyway, um, let's uh, let's uh, let's keep going. And and no, I'm still I'm still not talking to my mentor. This was actually the very last moment we talked. Just to introduce yourself and introduce yourself very carefully to one of the tough times produce strong men. Strong men produce good times. Good times produce weak men. Weak men produce tough times. Yes. If that's the truth, which phase are we in today? All right, so this Patrick Bet David guy, he's like, he's like very direct. He seems like direct initiating control so far. Like, definitely. Uh, definitely direct initiating control. Um, let's, uh, uh, Patrick, uh, Bet David, uh, very direct. He's initiating, he's outcome. So let's keep going. Price for enriching the rest of the world. You know, I mean, China's come up. Tommy has absolutely. I maintain Jordan Peterson is subconscious focused. Absolutely. in as much as I would argue that Bill Gates is subconscious focused in a miraculous way in the last 40 years, mm -hmm. South Korea, India, yep. while the entire, in all of Southeast Asia, and increasingly Africa too, because the fastest growing economies in the world are now in. Thank you, Underwater Panther, for debunking my claims about INFJs not necessarily being interested in Jordan Peterson. I maintain they are interested as long as they're looking to self-improve. The, the problem with NFJs is, is that they see themselves as teachers or leaders in some part, but they often, be, they're so focused on trying to be really good at teaching that they don't really spend any time being a good student. And this is why oftentimes I encounter INFJs who actually reject Jordan Peterson outright, and it's due to TI child God complex. The more humility an INFJ has, the more likely they are to be a follower of Jordan Peterson. And yes, Princess T, Bill Gates uh, should be scaring all of us. Um, and uh, I maintain that uh, Mr. Gates is, uh, quite frankly, an evil man. But that's just my personal opinion. And as long as we have the right to free speech, oh wait, we have the right to free speech regardless of what any government says, because, and I'll quote Voltaire, a man is free when he chooses to be. Uh, that, uh, you know, I'm not a fan of Bill Gates whatsoever. Sub-Saharan Africa, and that's produced a tremendous competition for working class people in the West, but speaking on a global level, there's- Speaking on a global level. Oh, guys, don't forget, I gotta put in a uh, website, uh, um, joseph.life uh, forward slash, um, famous you guys can see the people that i've already typed uh doing these uh, live streams so listen one place um uh mr anthrax i recommend jordan peterson's book 12 rules for life i generally don't recommend him otherwise his content that is uh specifically for 12 rules for life i do recommend but anything relating to his talks about globalism i absolutely reject now I don't know if Jordan Peterson has recently rejected globalism. I'm not sure. I hope he has. And if he has, then I'll definitely be a hardcore fan of Jordan Peterson. But so far, based on my knowledge of his career and the people that he hangs out with at the United Nations, I kind of have to believe that he is a globalist until I could see some evidence more than just his words. Because he'll even you know, claim that he's not a globalist, but his actions don't necessarily say that to me. And that's just kind of my my thing. So we did type Bill Gates. He's an INTP. Um, so awesome. Uh, all right. So let's, uh, let's, uh, get, uh, Mr. Jordan Peterson in the bag, uh, please. Um, in the bag, INTP again, it's nice to get some, uh, reassurance there that I was right the first time in using completely new, uh, interviews and the like. Um, so cool. Let's move on to the next one. Um, altruistic. So yeah, I mean, okay. Like altruistic with Monsanto, that's really altruistic. 
I mean, you know, things can look altruistic and not be altruistic. Don't forget, in the absence of explanation or communication, perceptions become reality. Check your reality. Make sure it's not an actual perception, you know, um, like just like this in the, as it is in the Matrix. You know, you could take the red pill, you could take the blue pill. Which pill are you taking? You know what I'm saying? All right. Daniel Karayuki wants NBA young boy again, huh? Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's go into Discord and uh, check out what the Super Chats are doing tonight. So, all right, so far, highest Super Chat is 32.70, I believe. Oh, adding to Rodney Mullen, okay. People really want uh, Rodney Mullen. Um, it's 20... Okay, twenty-five dollars, five dollars for Rodney Mullen again. It says thirty dollars. Uh, okay, Rodney Mullen's on top. Looks like so awesome. Uh, looks like we're doing Rodney Mullen first. All right, let's do that. Rodney Mullen, cool. Let's do that. Rodney Mullen. And we're gonna use blue ink for Rodney. Let's do this. Rodney Mullen. And gosh, I don't know. Okay, so we're at 25.52. Windows are notepad. I'm gonna get a notepad. And then we have JP at 25 minutes. And we have Rodney Mullen uh, starting basically now at 26.07 because y'all like uh, timestamps. I heard you like timestamps. So we're trying to actually like do that, etc. cetera. So let's, uh, let's get this show on the road. Rodney Mullen. I don't even know. Is it wrong that I don't know who Rodney Mullen is? I mean, I'm kind of ignorant here. Let's, uh, maybe I'll learn something cool. Rodney Mullen interview. I hope this is the, uh, okay. How do you use pain to be the best in the world? Sits down with Tony Hawk. Okay. One of the most inspirational talks ever. Okay. I like inspirational talks. Let's do it. I'm down. What's up? It's Tony Hawk, and, and this guy right here is the... If you want to get into the Discord, it is https colon whack whack csjoseph dot life forward slash social. You can find everything you need there. Get into that. Um, so... The godfather of all modern skateboarding tricks. This is Rodney Mullen. <laughs> To be able, it's such a gift to be able to look at something and to love it for the sake of it. And nurturing and maintaining that is one of the hardest tests of any pro, much less for anyone to find, right? What is the Beethoven who never found? His piano or harpsichord or, right? Oh my gosh, are we looking at like an FI hero right now? I mean, wow. I, that I just like, hmm, kind of sounds like it to me. Putting a point down for spear and bow on that. F-I-T-E for Mr. Rodney Mullen so far. Let's keep going. And like, so for me, I had an intuitive yearning that skating was for me. John Bodine, please look up uh, Jordan Peterson's uh, work uh, at the UN, especially when tied to UN Agenda 21. And when I found these movements and the little subtle things that no one was pointing me and telling me what to do because I have such a visceral push against being told what to do. Because I have such a visceral push to being told what to do. Yeah, because I never want anything to get in the way of my, in the way of my freedom of choice my introverted intuition, and my pragmatism independence, yeah? Yeah, okay, that, uh, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I'm down for that. Is he an ISFP, folks? Is he? Especially for this, you know? For the joy of what I'm doing, you're gonna tell me what to do. I struggle with that. There's days you wanna go. Yeah, I mean, Perceptions, right, Abby? People are like calling him altruistic. I, 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 I strongly question it, especially after UN Agenda ID 2020. So you could probably count that as a change of heart. Uh, 
I mean, he could have been very altruistic up until the point where he started owning Monsanto, and then after that, uh, getting involved with the UN Agenda ID 2020. Well, it hurts, or you're sore, or you just suck. You, you're, you're not making progress. You're ran You just suck. You're not making progress. Okay, yeah, that's an expert sensing statement. Awesome. Into the, and you feel defeated. Like sometimes after filming tricks, it would be everything I could not from wanting to turn my car off into the. You know what I mean? Like y y you take it that personal. You take it that personally. Okay, that's an FI statement if I ever heard one. It's Spear and Bow. Seems pretty informative. Uh, very informative. Uh, uh, keeps adding additional words, uh, providing additional context, and lots of uh, very explicit, explicit or implicit language. Excuse me. But that's, that's the nature of love, you know? It's got hate in there, you know? It's got pain in there. And it draws you to it. That's the magnetism. That's what... That's, that's the nature of love. That's an SE statement. Talking about nature in that way, even though that was kind of an abstract statement, but, uh, but doing it in like a, what seems to like be a concrete way, as near as I can tell, in terms of what he's getting out of it. He's also talking about what he's getting out of his practice. That's an interest-based statement. I guess I, I have that. I've nurtured it in my life. I see people with talent, with all those things. But the one thing they don't have is that just love for doing it for the sake of it. Love for doing it for the sake of doing it, guys. It's all about the music, man. You know, how many times when you, like, watch interviews with Queen, you have that one guy I always talk about. It's all, it's all about for the love of the music, guys. You know, that's the ISFP talking, like, literally, in that situation. That was another interest-based statement as well. Uh, seems to be the outcome uh, from that point of view. Let's look at a different... Uh... He's doing that in pools, and I'm having problems on the ground doing some other 180, like, wake up. And it would be so inspiring for me, you know? Would you say that you're the first person to really ollie on the flat ground? I, I, I mean, I'm mean, from Florida. Um, Al Gelfin came, and I watched him do it on Bert. It was... Uh, you know, like a, a thrust, right? When yeah. He moved. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't about the tail. Yeah, but there's an old freestyle trick, um, just a transfer, and when you need to get to your nose to do stuff like truck stands, um, you just click your tail and jump to your nose, so it would go like that. Right. So it's just a quick hop, and dude, it was all just after seeing him, I thought, you know, I'll just do that and jump. <laughs> after seeing him, you know, I think I'll just. Do that and uh, and jump. That's also expert sensing, uh, learning what other people are doing, and then be like, oh, I want to do that too, you know. So anyway, he is a wayfarer. Yes, Roddy Mullen is a wayfarer, and guess what? All uh, wayfarers are pragmatic, but they're not all uh, interest based. He's got interests, which means he is an SFP wayfarer. SFP. So is he informed initiating progression, or is he informed responding outcome? Which interaction style is Mr. Rodney Mullen? Let's keep going. That's all there was to it? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a transfer, and then in all of a day, suddenly you're getting over a foot. It seemed like I, it was just a good way to get up curbs. And uh, there was a contest six months later or something, Rusty Harris series. And I started my run with it, and Stacy was, I got the laugh. I knew it was good. Uh huh. And uh, he sent me to Thrasher right away up north, and they shot a picture of it, and they put a Put on the cover and I mean you started grabbing it not long after that right yeah I was talking about his little achievements hey you know I was on the cover of this magazine oh I'm a TE user definitely a TE user I mean of course you know I get it yeah so um and uh let's keep going because I want to be like you <laughs> I just didn't have Gus to skate pools <laughs> it's funny because I remember when you were doing like kickflips people couldn't figure out how you flip the board and then they call it the magic flip because they didn't know. But I do remember when you started doing 360 flips, people thought that was just a novelty. Am I wrong? Yeah. And that's how I felt. Like, people didn't barely notice the flip, right? Because it was more of a shove it. Right. And so I was like, all right, so I'll try double 360 flips, see if they get thin. And, you know, it was like that. Because, and <laughs> people, people didn't, didn't notice really the care. 360 flip, so let's double it <laughs> and see if they notice. But that was one that kind of went and it was like... Uh, Tommy Haas, I'd actually argue that... Um, Outcome is more about the ends, and uh, progression is about the means. Think about it that way as well. Uh, but uh, awesome, uh, awesome abstractions, sir. Keep it up. Uh, definitely going to do a point for responding. He is definitely uh, staying within the context of what he's being asked. He's not really going outside of it that much. So another background type, 
Ergo, Rodney Mullen is an ISFP. So awesome. Let's move on to the next person in our list. Good old Rodney Mullen. Awesome. Cool. Let's see who's next. Um, let's see here. Okay, so Rodney Mullen, uh, deleting that one there, uh, and then deleting this one here, and then Rodney Mullen here. That was really fun, guys. I really like doing Rodney Mullen. It's nice to see some ISFPs. Uh, thank you, Parzi, again. And then um, Warren Zevin. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so let's see who's next here. Um, okay, so 32, uh, Elizabeth Moff, now 32 to $35 now. Jimmy Page, do a Jimmy Page next, looks like. Jimmy Page is what's next. So we are off to uh, Le Jimmy Page, awesome. Um, okay. Jimmy Page, Jimmy Page interview. I, I hopefully this is like the right guy. So, twenty seventeen uh, conversation. With Jim, okay, no, I did not want that. Not new window. My goodness, come on. All right, so Roy Hopper and G Led Zeppelin. Okay, so it's a Led Zeppelin person, I think. Okay. Guitarist and founder of Led Zeppelin. Fair enough. Now I actually know who this person is. In August, I've managed to work. I, I find Robert Plant, and I work with Robert Plant. I get into my house, and I play him various ideas of things that I want to do on this album, because I had a very clear idea of what would work at that point in time with the FM radio in America that were just about getting to the point where they were playing whole sides of albums. I, 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 I Wow. That guy seems informed of initiating movement. Like, like Jimmy Page, okay. Seems like it. Let's see. Form initiating movement so far. Okay, let's just, uh, or progression as we say. But uh, let's, uh, let's not put all of our uh, uh, things in that. Uh... Okay, all right. All right, cool. All right. I realized that if you, if you had an album that had each track almost setting up, as you, as you had listened to one track, it would, it would set up the second track because it, it there would... Hey guys, if you guys are adding to the Super Chats, please also say what the total is because then I'm at like, that way I'm not at risk of, you know, being bad at math publicly here on television. I, I'd appreciate that, so thank you very much. I don't exactly have an assistant with me in the studio right now, making sure I'm not being terrible, so. It would be, there would be such a, div, such a diversity upon the album of different styles and different moods that it would capture people's imagination when they listen to it. And now we had the vehicle with the FM radio to be able to do that. So yeah, I had very clear ideas of the material that I wanted to do. And I'd yeah, I had very uh, clear ideas of the material that I'd wanted to do. He keeps talking about the past. It seems very introverted sensing, talking about his past and his experience. Let's keep going. And I'd written communication breakdown. I had the whole, whole, um, the whole um, chart really for um, Babe, I'm going to leave you. And uh, yeah, so I worked with him. And it was just he and I, and I played him some material that I'd done with the Yardbirds, like Dazed and Confused. And um, he recommended a drummer um, that was um, John Bonham. And then um, I'd seen John Bonham play. And I felt him play, actually. It was quite an experience. And he was, he was playing with a, a musician called Tim Rose, who wrote, um, he wrote um, Morning Dew. I think he might have written Hey Joe as well, that Jimi Hendrix did. So, so um, there were now sort of a possible three, and John Paul Jones heard I was getting a, a band together and called me up and said, 
I hear you're putting a band together. Would you consider me on bass? And I said, okay, marvellous. Because I played, I'd played with him in the studios in various sessions. Um, Rob yeah, super, super progression. Very progression, very informative. Definitely a starter type, as near as I can tell. Um, I'm not trying not to be quickly to say abstract versus concrete, but so far it seems abstract, but I want to see more evidence of that. Definitely seems systematic. Uh, he's talking about the systems, talk about the FM radio uh, as much as I can as I can tell. Um, so definitely, um, definitely, uh, definitely systematic in that uh, regards. So. Robert had had a, a, a short time when he played with John Bonham, but John Bonham was off and you know playing around and. Stuff. Let's get a different. Uh... Area at that point, you'd hear of other guitarists and meet other guitarists, but nobody was in a really close proximity to you. Um, but there was an art college at Epsom. Jeff Beck's sister was attending that art college. There was um, a record collector who collected. To constantly talk about other people's experience in this one, that's a point for extroverted sensing. So N I S E. So we're gonna so we're gonna have a little bit of a battle over his uh, over his uh, looks like his perception functions. So we'll see how that goes. Collected rock and roll and rockabilly records, and they were having a conversation, and she said, "There's my brother's really rich, and he plays records, and he he's sort of trying to learn guitar from them, but he, he he's only got a homemade guitar." Then he said, "Well." We've got one of those here, you know, who lives in Epsom. Well, I think they cooked it up. Maybe maybe we should get these two two together. And there was a knock on the door, and there there was Jeff's sister, and there was Jeff holding his homemade guitar, and we we just bonded immediately. But but curiously enough, I get sort of headhunted to play on session. Oh, curiously enough, I get sort of headhunted to play... Okay, that's, a, that's an obvious TE statement. That's so TE. <laughs> And and also like he 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 uh, he uh, he name dropped John Paul Jones earlier too, so that's also a te thing. And 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 it was a very sort of um, very interesting sort of time really because I would go into the the, the session lineup with these guys who were considerably older than I was. I mean, a good seven years older. For being Oh, that's another TE statement, comparing himself to all these older, more capable guys, you know, that, another TE statement, talking about his achievements again. The youngest one. Okay, so I was a studio musician, and I'd done sessions for this fellow called George Ogomelski, who actually was the manager of the Yardbirds. Oh, another TE. Okay, thank you for Mr. Mr. Name Drop here, Jimmy Page. Guys, like, honestly, it, it's really between ESFP or uh, ENTP at this point. Um, that's kind of, like, where it's at. Definitely, uh, definitely pragmatic. So we need to spend a lot of time here. We need to spend a lot of time here on abstract versus concrete, systematic versus interest as well. Um, form initiating movement, these things are basically done, so... We got this in the bag, um, but uh, we need to figure out, is he a crusader or a wayfarer? So we need to spend time focusing on that, and we need to spend time focusing on these right now to get more evidence. So let's keep going. Kind of seems concrete so far, but uh, I want to verify that. And he'd asked me to join the Yardbirds at one point. I didn't feel very comfortable about it because I knew Eric didn't know, and I said no, and then it came... Because I knew Eric didn't know. Gosh, that's another uh, TE statement, and that's also an SE statement as well. Um, so more expert sensing is piling up. came up another time, and by that time I was a producer, and I'd worked my way up. Being a studio musician, I took it on board as almost like an apprenticeship because I wanted to learn from the recording engineers for certain techniques. I really wanted to learn how things were done. Really wanted to learn how things were done. That was That's an extroverted sensing statement as well. It's getting closer and closer to Wayfair, folks, as we keep going. By this time, I could read music, which meant that I could write it and do arrangements. And, and then I was... Yeah, but when you have introverted sensing uh, as an optimistic nemesis function, when it becomes your ally, you can also speak in that regards as well, in terms of your own experience. It can happen.
be advised. Juicing as well, so I was in a really good sort of zone. And when I when I had this this second request to join, I said, "Well, I know somebody who'd be really good for this, and it's Jeff, Jeff Beck." And of course, he went in there and did some amazing work at the Art Birds. I mean, yeah, absolutely amazing. Out of this world then, and is out of this world now. It's just fabulous. So what happens as a result of this? Jeff being in the arbors, I'm still living with my parents at the time in Epsom, and I hear this sort of car roar up, and I thought, what's that? I didn't know it was a car. That's introverted sensing. That's uh, talking about, I heard this car come up, and I made this decision. So that's introverted sensing as well. Gosh, maybe it's not actually between ESFP, ENTP. What if ENFP is still in the running here? This, could, this is getting really interesting. Um, still holding out for, uh, still holding out for ESFP. Wow, this is, uh, this is, this is pretty good. Pretty good. Definitely an FITE or as near as I could tell. Is it, is it really, is it really between ESFP and ENFP? It's kind of getting interesting, folks. Kind of getting really, really interesting. Gonna have to say no to the ENTP side for sure. Um, gonna have to say no. So, let's, uh, let's keep going. I just heard this thing roaring up and I looked out the window and I saw that there was a, uh, a Corvette Stingray outside and there's a door, somebody's getting out, of course it's Jeff and Jeff's coming out and he's holding this guitar and he's kind of always come to have a play, you know and he knocks on the door and I say, come in Jeff, you know and he's saying about the, that they've just done a sort of uh, a new deal and he bought the, the Stingray with it and he said here, this is yours, and he gave me the Telecaster that he'd been using. He said, this is for yours for getting me in the yard, but said, well, obviously I was really moved. I mean, you know, it's got a lot of love in that. In, in wow, you know, I was really moved. Yeah, that's a very FI statement for sure, definitely. So, for initiating movement, FITE user, therefore he can only be ESFP or ENFP, but I know that he keeps talking about his past guys, but I'm just seeing far more extroverted sensing in there than I am seeing introverted sensing. Let's, uh, let's move on to a different interview so we can extract some more. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know why people watch this show. I think this, is, uh, this, this book, I think, is uh, delightful because, well, for one thing, it's irresistible. You're, you're drawn to it because you know it's rock and roll. And then you start yeah. looking through it and you can't stop looking through these photos. How did you go about collecting? Yes, yeah, shout out quick, I agree. Uh, there is too much recollection of events, which definitely indicates concrete. So he definitely, definitely seems super concrete to me. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm just holding out for some abstraction, but I'm just not really seeing it. This quantity of photos from your career well, I had a lot of photographs from the very early stages, like the pre-Beatles stage, and uh, they were like in the family archives and my own archives from when I was a kid. And then I had various photographs along the way. Like so notice how he's talking about how, oh, it was, in, it was in the family archives and then it was in my archives. He's always using the reference, the external sensory reference before he ties it back to himself. Every time he talks, he's all about this other person, then he ties it back. This other person, then he ties it back. That's an example of cognitive orbit between extroverted sensing and introverted sensing. And SE heroes do that all the time. I know, because I'm married to an SE hero and she does this all the time. She uses the external reference first and then draws it back. And just watch them do that over and over and over and over. Like when I went to a cottage in Wales, called Bron Ra with Robert Plant and we did some writing and I had photographs from there and it but Oh and I had photographs from there. Okay, now the totem. Basically I had these points of reference right. all the way. Oh I had all these points of reference as T E and S E at the same time. True. And I was very keen to do an autobiography in photographs because I was very keen to do an autobiography in photographs. That's a very artisan uh, point of view. When other people do a a a, a, a bio When other people do biographies which is SE. Autobiography. I always look to see what the pictures you are. Right. I always want to see what the pictures are. My NI always wants to see with the SE. 
I always want to see Thin. the pictures. I, I do. do the same I thing. do. I thumb right yes. through it and I say, oh, yeah. cool pictures. Yes. Because I... many times it will contain pictures you have not seen before, yeah. unpublished photos, yeah. and they're quite a... Yeah, so initiating. Yeah, okay. There you go. Uh, I'm done. This man is... He is an ESFP. So there you go. Jimmy Page at 4935. Um... 4935 is an ESFP. Awesome. Rodney Mullen, uh, ISFP. And oh, look, Jordan Peterson again, INTP. Fair enough. AF. Awesome. All right. So let's go. Let's go. Awesome. All right. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Okay, so we're going to uh, get that uh, Jimmy Page out. Then any more Jimmy Page? Awesome. All right, Jimmy Page. Okay, so we have Elizabeth Moss. Oh, looks like Jack Tenney. It's probably got the lead right now, as near as I can tell. Um, Axel Rose is okay, just slightly. Um, Seven Lions, uh, Jeff Montalvo just came in. We'll do that one. Jeff Montalvo, uh, is next. Interest. Thank you, uh, Weirvik with that because that was like pretty awesome. <laughs> Super chat just out of nowhere and just like, oh, no, I got this. <laughs> like, okay, bro, you got this. All right. So Jeff Montalvo, uh, Montalvo. And then uh, let's go into the, uh, all right, so Jeff Montalvo interview. I don't know what you mean by that, Mr. Anthrax. I don't know what you mean by transfer. Uh, yeah, so, okay. Okay, Seven Lions, okay. Grammy Pro Buzz with Seven Lions. Uh, seven Lions. Headbang with Seven Lions. Way to say goodbye. Seven Lions interview. Um. Welcome to another edition of Grammy Pro Buzzin. I'm Daniel Mendoza, Seven Lions. Hey, how you doing today? Good. Glad yeah, to be here. When did you get here? Uh, just a few hours ago, actually. A few hours ago? Yep. Cool. And you have a busy weekend coming up. Yeah. yeah. So when are you playing? Saturday at 9.30. Saturday at 9.30. Main what stage? stage. Main stage. Ooh, yeah. No, I've got the, got the nerves. Saturday at 9.30. Main stage. Okay. Uh, I, could, I could argue uh, a TE statement there, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it seems like he's actually stating TI facts, so uh, we'll, we'll keep going. For sure. Very but, cool. Now yeah, you're going to do great. Fun. Yeah, I'm excited for sure. Cool. Well, tell us a little bit about how you got your start. Um, just music in general, I guess, like the way back would be my dad is a musician and mm -hmm. we always had instruments around the house. So um, just naturally played in bands in middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. And then the transition into electronic music was basically wanting to be able to write and compose music without having a band, you know, yeah. having to rely on people. Sure. So it's kind of where that transition. Without having a band, without having to rely on people. Sounds pretty pragmatic if you ask me. Transition happened. Cool, very cool. Yeah. So when was it that you transitioned from wanting to be in a band and, you know, rock and roll and to electronic music? And I'm sure that that influence is still there. Oh yeah, um, definitely still a metalhead at heart for yeah. sure. Um, the transition, though, really was after high school. Like, I played in a band, Del Mar, and I, you know, still really love those guys. But um, I moved away to college and didn't have a lot of friends, so I spent a lot of time working on music and yeah. just hanging out. And I think that's when I moved to college, uh, spent a lot of time working on music, etc., cetera, uh, just working out. Um, okay, thank you for sharing your introverted sensing experience with us, good sir. Um, and definitely seems progression, not really outcome focused. 
he would have stated that he has some goals. He's just kind of like hanging out, not really having goals per se. He's just working on music, whatever, see what happens. When I really got into it, I got into industrial music around that time too. Totally. Went to a bunch of goth clubs in San Francisco and yeah, that was that. Was that. Nice. Went to a lot of goth clubs in San Francisco, introverted sensing, got an industrial music in that way, introverted sensing as well. Um, doesn't seem to be using any TE statements. Seems to be he's doing it from a TI standpoint. So we're looking at a possible crusader at this point. Maybe an ISFJ. Could be really interesting. Nice. So you're talking about you spent a lot of time like making music and, and where do you start when you are crafting a song? Do you start with lyrics? Do you start with, you know, the composition and the melody? Melody, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, and mood. Like I, I generally know what vibe I want to go for. Ooh, I generally know what vibe I want to go for. It's an FE statement, so another point for Sword and Mace, uh, for sure. Uh, definitely what vibe I want to go for. Definitely seems uh, informative uh, and definitely seems responding. He's not exactly initiating, so he may be informative responding outcome. So we might look at background, uh, and uh, but uh, not sure. It could be a cognitive transition. Let's keep going. Before. Sure. Uh, sometimes I'll sit down and think like it'll be really cool to have a song that it has this kind of mood and you know this kind of section that does something like this and I have a structure in my head and sometimes I'll like be in the shower and I'll be like oh that's a really good melody and then I'll like get out and yeah. just put it down. Structure in my head, oh that's a really good melody, okay yeah that that's a, seems to be a systematic approach. Um, also kind of might uh, be uh, ex uh, expert intuition as well because that's how I create music as well. It just comes to me in when I'm sleeping or when I'm in the shower or when I'm driving. Uh, so who knows. Um, but uh, definitely seems systematic so far and uh, we had a point of pragmatic. Ooh, gosh. I don't know. He could be for initiating progression. He could be a starter or a background. So we're looking at uh, we're looking at starter. We're looking at background for sure, um, and uh, definitely a crusader. So let's see where it goes. Really quick, and then go from there. So it's different all the time. And it's really interesting that you say that it really is is fueled by your mood. Because I get that mm -hmm. totally from the music that you create and that I listen to that's yours. It's very, it's very different, but to me, it is absolutely mood driven. And I think, you know, lyrically, like the lyrics. Yes, I do. I do make music. Um, <laughs> you guys should see the poetry that I do. I, um, I'll, I'll whip it out. I was actually thinking about creating like a, a companion channel to uh, discuss uh, or actually to, uh, and I just have like little episodic uh, poems that have one grand narrative, but they're also like a song at the same time. So that get accompanied with it mm -hmm. also kind of portray some of that. Like, how do you come up with the lyrics that go with music? Well, usually I leave the lyrics up to the vocalists and I kind of help them with, um, like I have not, well, kind of rules almost. Like I don't want anything to be, um, uh, that you can pin down to modern time, I yeah. guess. Like, I want everything to be timeless to where people can listen to it. want everything to be timeless. That's a very interesting uh, point of view. That's a systematic statement um, that's potentially abstract. So I'm going to put an abstract question there on that one. And uh, that was also outcome. So he's kind of transitioning. I think he's transitioning between ISFJ and ENTP. This is probably why it's getting a little bit difficult for me. So that's where I'm at right now, folks. I'm at ISFJ and ENTP with this guy. Um, don't you guys get any Serge Tankian vibes with this guy, which is more ENTP, but uh, I don't know. Let's look for some affiliative approach. You know, 10 years from now, I'm be like, oh man, that song wasn't like this weird phase I went through in yeah. 2000. 16 you know like I want it to be the only person I rap to is my wife currently something that people can really listen to and like for a while and I think the key to that is to not be too hip and like you know so you only wish you had chest hair right Lazarus just kidding I, I try to tell him to, like let's be metaphorical and um, you know sure. that's kind of where I go let's let's be metaphorical guys 
let's let's be metaphorical abstract you know well and i guess the great thing about that is a great song is a great song is a great song and is gonna all right we'll change the interview <laughs> We're here at the EVC pre-party featuring Seven Lion. Hi. Hi. Uh, I just had a couple of questions. He's so uncomfortable with his SI. He's like, hmm. Can you just tell us a little bit about what will you be playing tonight? Um, I'll probably play a little bit of everything like I normally do. Um, I play house music, trance, dubstep, um, trap even. Because I, I like to make all kinds of music, so I'll play it all as well. In your previous tracks, you have been interwoving a lot of uh, other genres. Which other genres do you plan to tap in this time? Mm, I mean, it's always different, like probably some side trance a little bit, um, some trap. I, I mean, like I said, I like everything, so I'll play a bit of everything. I mean, I don't... Gosh, yeah. I mean, he just initiated, he just initiated. really play much Deep House, because tonight isn't really the right night for it, but other than that, I'll play everything. It's not really the night, the right night for that. Gosh, that seems so Effie Child. He reminds me of um, Justin. Uh, shout out to Justin Balliard. He, he definitely reminds me of Justin so much. Just like with how he talks and the cadence and whatnot. I mean, it looks like... Uh, Looks good. like it's getting a little bit closer to initiating on that side, for sure. Let's keep going. So far, you have had about three extended plays which have been released. Are you working on a full-length studio album? I wish. It's just, it's hard to have enough time to actually do a full album, so I'll probably have um, two more. Oh, it's hard to actually get enough time to do a full album because, like, I'm a starter type and I can't finish anything that I start, LOL, because I'm not, pro I'm not outcome focused enough to, like, actually finish an album. I'm more progression, guys. Just saying. Just saying. Gosh, it's so hard for me to type my own type. It's so hard. EPs coming out in 2015. One of them is almost done, um, so I'll be announcing that soon. Uh, could you at least tell us which is the label under which it is releasing? Um, I am actually signed with Casablanca. They're part of Universal, so it'll be with them. I do have a single coming out in December with Ausla. Okay, I do have a single coming out with... Okay, so that was not even part of that question, so that was another point he initiated as well. But my main label is Casablanca. Have you heard a lot of Indian EDM artists? Um, not that I can think of off the top of my head. To be honest, I mostly listen to metal unless I'm like looking to put together a set. So, I mean, I... To be honest, I mostly just do this whole thing because it's not expert at sensing. I don't know why this guy is assuming he's an expert at sensor. Yeah, not really. I yeah, know. Not really. Okay, another initiation. All right, there you guys have it. Jeff Montalvo is an ENTP. Wow, that was a, that was a very fun typing. You guys are like doing some really complex ones tonight. I'm really enjoying myself. Uh, and thank you for the very large uh, super chat on this one. I, I, I love this one and it's pretty cool that he's an ENTP, not gonna lie. So let's move on to the next one as well. Um, all right. I also think Jeff Montalvo needs to uh, read the book No Mr. Nice Guy as soon as possible. It's obviously ISFJ focused. So, and ISFJ focused ENTPs need to like check that stuff out more than most people. All right, so the next one we have is, looks like we're going back to Jeff Tenney, Jack Tenney. I'm sorry, wow, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jack, Jack, Jack Tenney. Let's, uh, let's do some blood red for this one. Jack Tenney. Okay, Jack Tenney. Uh, let's do here. Crush that, crush that, crush that. And Jack Tenney. Um, okay. Um, interview. So Juke Squad. Okay. Jack Tenney, Juke Squad interview, Concrete Podcast. Interview with Jack from the Juke Squad, okay. Um, best Fortnite player in the world is my brother. 
Okay, next. Okay. All right, so we're rolling. What's up, Jack? What up, guys? What's Thank up, you man? for having me. How you doing, bro? Good. How about uh, a nice introduction for Jack? Give him an intro for us. This is you Jack this. Tenney from the Joke Squad. Mm -hmm. World renowned. Brother of Tifu, I guess. Maybe, maybe more. <laughs> He's, no longer, <laughs> He's no longer. He's oh, no longer. Son Jack. of Mike Concha. You know, I yeah, son of Mike Concha. The other day, as Tifu's little brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. This guy, like, if I was gonna make an immediate prediction just off of visual typing alone, he's an INFJ. Just saying. Mike Concho's his dad too. We have Mike Concho's son and yeah, Tifu's brother. Arch nemesis of Ben Mallow. <laughs> <laughs> It was yep, a good battle. That's me, guys. I'm here. So it's pretty cool that we get to have you on the podcast because, you know, not many people get to have your time other than your own channel, which is pretty cool. You're Thank pretty you, man. And we get the special. Local, you're we pretty get busy. The local legend on the podcast. Yeah. Yes. He had to drive all the way from Clearwater to Seminole. The <laughs> <laughs> we very really appreciate it. Five minute drive. Right? I don't even have a ride into the rivers that leads to the ocean. Um, Red tide is technically just a type of algae, and when it gets mixed with another toxic type of algae that comes out of Lake Okeechobee, it just gets dis. It's talking about uh, physical mechanics uh, and how things work in that regard. That's an S E N I approach, uh, and he's doing it in a direct manner so far. Gusting. And uh, another thing that people don't realize is red tide has not naturally occurred on its own since 1920. And it used to only happen when there was um, giant fish spawns, when you know, there'd be tons and tons of fish spawning. And uh, since we're overfishing now, we actually haven't had enough fish. Oh, oh. it's a truck. What it's a truck. <laughs> He's so distracted by that truck noise. It's also another point of extroverted sensing. Uh, it seems to be TIFE user. It's got FE self-deprecation in there as well. So, so far, it seems like a, a Templar type. He's also responding, progression, so he's a finisher, as near as I can tell, uh, pretty easily, and definitely a Templar, which makes him either ISTP or INFJ, just right off the bat. So let's keep going. Um, there hasn't been a fish bond... Like, it's been over 100 years since there was... Uh, enough fish to naturally cause a red tide and now it's just toxic algae coming from all these farms and uh, so how, come it, how come it's so much worse this year than than other years it's just a combination it's just like the perfect storm pretty much yeah. are they polluting more <laughs> nowadays or yeah it's just I mean uh, they're it's just building they're like, up. everybody's saying big sugar it's it's a combination of a lot of different corporations but um, you know they're there's record crops every single year. There was a whole lot of rain this year, too. Yeah. And that led to all the crops getting too flooded. You know, like... All Go, and that led to the crops getting too flooded. It's very logical, talking about logic. Um, and uh, I think that was a uh, very interest-based uh, statement as well. But, I mean, hey, he's a Templar, so obviously he's going to be interest. Uh, so what we need to be focusing on right now is abstract versus concrete and affiliative versus uh, pragmatic. Uh, so far, since he kind of seems to be coming off like an environmentalist, I'm going to stay affiliative so far. But there's not enough evidence to really uh, convict him as an INFJ, so let's keep going. All these crops that they're growing are farmed on swamp lands that are constantly drained. They need to be drained or else it'll just flood all their crops. Right. So where are they? Well, it needs to be drained or it'll flood all their crops. Okay, you know, that's, that's an affiliative thing. Uh, gosh. Uh, I mean, I, I could argue ENFJ focused ISTP, but I want to I want to see um, I want to see a little bit more. Drain the water straight into Lake Okeechobee, creates these toxic algae blooms, makes its way to the ocean, and then we have like a supercharged red tide toxic algae bloom. Like look at that water. That is not the that color that the ocean is supposed to be. Where is and that? That is also not the, that's John's Pass. Okay. Wow, he's like being so environmentalist right now. It's very affiliative. Very affiliative. Okay, yeah, he's an INFJ. Like, there's, there's no, there's no point in continuing. He's an INFJ. And interesting how visual typing uh, worked out pretty well. So Jack Tenney, uh, INFJ, and finished at one o eight fifty one. Next, hashtag next. Got ourselves an INFJ here. 
Is it wrong that the most memorable typing that I've had so far, at least recently, was Penn Badgley? I, I don't know why. I've, I've even been talking about Penn Badgley a lot on Facebook for some reason. I have no idea why. I've never even seen a show, you know, so, but uh, I, I have no idea. Okay, so Juke Squad, Sergey, thank you, Sergey, uh, for that. Much appreciated, bro. Uh, very, very much appreciated. Um, okay, it looks like uh, Elizabeth Moss is next. We're doing some Elizabeth Moss. Um, let's keep going. Uh, Elizabeth Moss is top at $32 right now. If you guys want to outbid anyone, let me know. Um, so far, $32. And uh, Elizabeth Moss. So uh, is this the same Elizabeth Moss from like that movie, The Saint? with, Or is that a different Elizabeth? I don't, I don't remember. Um, that movie, The Saint with Belle Kilder. Is that, is that the same person? I, I, I don't know. I, maybe we'll find out, I guess. I really like that film. I, I really like that film, The Saint. Elizabeth Moss. Oh, that's Elizabeth Smart. Or Elizabeth Shue. Gosh. Elizabeth Shue. I think it's Elizabeth Shue. Um, okay, Elizabeth Moss on Oprah. Ugh, gross, Oprah. Um... Oh, she's the, okay, she's the uh, Handmaid's Tale actress. Okay, cool. Um, I have avoided watching that show because it brings back some really rough memories. Good to see you. Thank you. It's you really look good great. to see you. Thank you I so like much. this outfit you have on. Yeah, it's like my Fembot dress. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is a little bit robot. It yeah, good. it's my Fembot dress. Okay, cool, because, like, I'm initiating. Awesome. Finally, an initiator. You... We're just in Australia, yes. correct? Yes, I'm shooting The Invisible Man there. Oh, this is a movie? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Is it the sci-fi Invisible Man? Like a, the, the horror Invisible Man. The yeah. horror Invisible Man. Yeah, it's Man. a very scary movie, hopefully. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's a very scary movie, hopefully. Okay. Informative. <laughs> very, very informative. Um, and I think she might have talked about her performance, hoping how the film performs. Might be expert sensing, but we'll see. I don't play the Invisible Man. You do not. No. no. Spoiler. The, who, no. no, I don't play the uh, Invisible Man as I initiate again and uh, extroverted sense jest out there as well. Okay. Who does play the Invisible Man? Is that Oliver Jackson Cohen? Okay. Yeah. Does he have to be there the whole time? Oliver Jackson Cohen. Oh my gosh! Like name drop, kind of. Even though she was kind of supposed to, it was direct, but. How she said it, the emphasis of her voice kind of seems FIT to me. She might be a wayfarer, but uh, let's keep going. Too little evidence to know for sure. Even though he's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> no, he has like the easiest job in the world. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. No, he has like the easiest job in the world. It's expert sensing. She's also progression. Seems like a starter type. Seems like a starter. Let's keep going. <laughs> That's what I would want to be, the invisible man. Yeah. But you celebrated a birthday there in Yes, Australia. I did. I just turned 37, I think, last week. What's your general... I just turned 37, but I think that was, like, last week, because expert sensing, you know. Okay, yeah, sure. Um. Happy birthday. Thank you. What is your general feeling on birthdays and the celebration factor? I'm, I'm, I'm not a big birthday person. I mean, since I was like 10 years old, I'm kind of good. I just want to be low key about it. Okay. And so, but I don't know if this ever happened to you, but if you don't say anything, if nobody knows it's your birthday, it's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If nobody knows it's your birthday, you know, it's kind of sad. Oh, gosh, that could be an FITE statement. That could also be an FE statement. They're kind of canceling out on each other, so I'm not really going to say. But again, definitely. Form initiating progression. She is a starter type, hardcore starter type. And if she is an SE user uh, and automatically being a starter type, there's only one SE starter type, which would basically make her an ESFP by default. So let's uh, let's look a little bit forward just to confirm. But I really think she's an ESFP. Oh yeah, well, sure. It's kind of Has weird. that happened to you? <laughs> Probably. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I want like some celebration, but I don't want it to be too much. I like to set my expectations really low. The people around you kind of have to figure out. They have to gauge what you want. Yeah. Okay. This guy Kimmel is an S user. How's it going? Going really. Whoa! Another Kimmel. Ugh, stop being on Kimmel. Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest tonight is an. Now. Oh my gosh! Look at that dress. 
Oh my gosh, that's like, gosh, totemic memory, extroverted sensing, again. All right, I'm not even going to bother moving on forward. This, she is an ESFP hardcore. Elizabeth Moss, ESFP. All right, Elizabeth uh, Moss, ESFP, and this is 114.49. Cool. Moving on to the next one. Pretty awesome. Elizabeth Moss. Uh, oh, Glamour UK interview. I didn't do the specific interview that I was asked to do. All right, fine. I'll do that. Elizabeth uh, Moss, uh, Glamour UK interview. Okay, uh, that's this one. Welcome back to Glamour Unfiltered, hosted by me, Josh Smith. And today we're joined by the... After you're entertained, after you scream, yeah. and after you eat your popcorn, and you flies everywhere. After you um, all do all these things, because I'm expert sensing. That. I'm going to have a chat with that person and see if there's anything that they need to talk about. Yeah. You know? Have you learned the power of talking in your own life? Yeah. I mean, I believe in communication. I believe it's sort of something that really will fix most things if you just kind of have a conversation about something. And mm. listening. I think listening's important. Mm. We so often are so... We just like the sound of our own voices, yeah. you know? And sound so of our own voices, T-E. I think about this all the time because we spend so much time in our society today, like we're overwhelmed with information. Yeah. And everyone's just waiting for their opportunity to No, talk. tell the ENTP to shut up. The best thing to do is just go, what? Just you tell me what's going on, you mm. know? And you tell me what's going on, S-E, you tell me. You tell me, S-E-T, you tell me what's going on, okay? Listen to them and you'll learn something. Yeah. <laughs> How's your yeah, there's no need to go further with this. She She's exactly as we have her typed. All right, cool. So we got a lot of people tied at $30, uh, as near as I can tell. Uh, a bunch of people tied. And when people get uh, tied, then, uh, ooh, people... Okay, so Axel Rose, which is 1999, which would technically be a few cents behind, even though it's close to 30. So we got $30 at 50 cents. We got uh, Brad Pitt at $30 as well, um, but we have Rob Lowe at $30, and that $30 one came in first. Ergo, Rob Lowe was first. If you wanna make sure your guys' uh, stuff get in on tonight's show, make sure you guys uh, definitely uh, up the Super Chats if you want. Um, so Rob, uh, I think so, hold on, let me make sure. Okay, yeah, Rob Lowe, Rob Lowe interview awesome okay i just really misspelled that like a derp i'm derping derping oh this guy rob Lowe's awesome i like this guy recalls his brutal roast please welcome lifelong heart Throb, Rob Lowe. Yeah! Welcome! Yeah! All right, the character that he plays in Parks and Recreation is an ENFJ. I would like to state that. So let's let's move uh, let's move forward. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I love this dog. He's so cute. Uh, Tommy Hass. Uh, philosophers punish bad Templars all the time by spreading rumors about Templars and creating arbitrary rules that everyone else has to follow that benefit the philosopher and not the Templar. That's how they do it. You know, that's Chunky, Chunky. He's, yeah, he used to sit still and now he just roams and knocks shit over. No, he's in the background of every close up of you. He's like, you just see him crossing. It's hilarious. I know. It's good to see. You just see him crossing. It's hilarious. Okay. Thank you, Rob Lowe. You're initiating. And you're an SE user, so let me get that uh, written down here for you. Good, sir. Initiating SE user. You know what? For you, Rob Lowe, we're going to use the rainbow pen, because why not? Rob Lowe gets his own little rainbow pen, and uh, definitely initiating, and he is fire and air. So... See you. It's you. You got a lot of attention. First of all, I want to talk to you about that roast, because I Dogs can't... love me, but incidentally... Dogs and kids. What? I know what it says about me, but I think it's good. <laughs> How do crusaders punish wayfarers? With justice, of course. <laughs> yes, justice, public shaming, um, uh, taking back what they've stolen. 
uh, robbing the rich and uh, feeding the poor, basically. Think Robin Hood. The Sheriff of Nottingham is a wayfarer, and Robin Hood is the crusader. Keep that in mind. What, dogs don't like certain people? Yeah! Like who? Uh, certain people. That's actually true, you know? Right? My, my dog actually doesn't usually like men. Just saying. <laughs> just saying, we gotta... You got a thing going thing with going. dog? It's just not that unusual to be liked by a dog, is what I'm saying. Like, that's not something you bring up in a conversation. Oh, I do, I bring it up. <laughs> so I want to ask you about your roast. Well, how do you... Uh, I... Chelsea Handler, she's an ENTJ, so, I mean, it is what it is. Um, and she's also pragmatic, so... Does one decide to do that roast? Because it's brutal. Brutal. Those, those are... Do you... Are you you guys, any, anybody see my Comedy Central roast? Yeah. yeah. Brutal, right? Thank you. Uh, well, so I have, I have two... Almost... What, do you, what, do you have a fucking bone in your pocket? I'm telling I mean, you. What is going on? I'm I, told, I warned you. <laughs> I mean, really, come on now. Um, so, I... I have... I mean, really? Come on now. I warned you. I I, I warned you. I'm a, I'm a TIFE user. Come on now. You know, and he's direct. So, awesome. And uh, seems to be outcome as well. So I'll put him as an in charge type. He may actually be an ENFJ. Ask my kids. What's, what's fucking happening? Chuck, sit down and behave yourself. I know. I know it's hard. It is. Um, I know. I know. I know it's hard. It is. Okay, that's that's NISC. This guy this guy's a Templar. Come on. Rob Lowe's a Templar. So <laughs> You're proud of yourself. So um, I asked my my kids are 22 and like 24 and they know everything that's cool and I was like should I do this roast? They're like, oh, Dad, you have to. I'm like, oh, all right. And then I asked my wife and she's like, ah, oh, you must not. <laughs> and then she's like, well, wait a minute, are they paying you? I'm like, yeah. She goes, how much do they pay? Oh, wait a minute, are they paying you? Yeah, because his wife is an obvious TE user. Paying you? And I told her, she goes, oh, you have to. <laughs> so. You know, they're so talk about other people constantly. This definitely SE two SE statements as a result, direct initiating control. So if he's an SE user, direct initiating uh, control, he is either an ESTP, uh, he is either an ENTJ, or he is an ENFJ, which I maintain is likely AF. He's an ENFJ. Um, so and he seems affiliative so far, um, based on it. And if he is affiliative, he's automatically an ENFJ, but uh, let's keep going. He's also talking about what people get out of different things, what he's getting out of this particular situation. He's talking about this like deal that he was gonna sign on for, which automatically eliminates ENTJ. He cannot be ENTJ, so he's either ESTP or ENFJ, but also we already have Templar selected, so that also eliminates uh, ENTJ. Uh, gets rid of that. Um, so Templar is automatically uh, these two and when applied here, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, ignore what that kind of looks like on the screen, please. Uh, but let's continue. It was both commercial and, you know, I love a good mean joke. I do. I, it makes me a bad person. I love no, I don't a think mean joke. I love a good mean joke, yeah, because you have a cruel vice of an ENFJ, good sir. Oh. I don't think it makes you a bad person. It's just subjecting yourself to, like, you're really getting, you know, raked mm -hmm. over the coals. Rake, the first, like, couple of times, you're like, ha, ah, ha, ha, ha. And then, like, the <laughs> eighth time, you're like, ah. And then Ann Coulter, I mean, that was a disaster. Listen, I think Ann thought we were serving roast. <laughs> I, I, I really... I just think it was an honest mistake. She wasn't an honest mistake. She got paid too. She knows why she was going there. She doesn't. You can't never have heard of a Comedy Central roast and know what know what that means. Exactly, because I mean, I asked a, a ton of my friends to be on the dais, or or to, and 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 most of them were too scared. Yeah. Or were like, I don't want to be mean to you. Right. Too scared. I don't want to be mean to you. This is a TIFE statements. Uh, that's also affiliative interest so yeah rob Lowe is an enfj for sure just based on process of elimination and that is at 123.52 one uh 23.52 okay awesome rob Lowe is done let us move on to the next one thank you so much uh, for that one as well Templar style. Hell yeah. Uh, okay, so um, 
What's next? Uh, Rob Lowe, he got the $30, $30, $30. Okay, so Rob Lowe is next. We got uh, Brad Pitt. Oh, we got Jen and Amber uh, competing this evening. I wonder who's going to win. I wonder. I wonder indeed. Oh, there's the Elizabeth uh, Moss one as well. I'm going to delete that one there. But Curtis Jackson, 50 Cent, is next. Awesome. 50 Cent. All right. So we're going to do red for this one. 50 Cent. Automatic point for pragmatic, right? No, just kidding. Um, let's do this. Um, ding, 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 ding. And uh, Curtis Jackson interview. Nice. 50 Cent, Late Show on Eminem, End of Power, uh, Rapper 50 Cent, Thinks Like a Harvard Businessman, uh, 50 Cent Interviews with Stephen Colbert, Trump offered uh, half a million dollars. What? Why? Okay. I got to see that. I mean, you're, you're a very influential guy. You have been for, for many years. Has any politician ever tried to sort of get your support? Have they ever courted you for support in the past? Yeah, with, with Trump during the inauguration. Really? In what way? What did he do? They offered me a half a million dollars to go. They offered you a half a million dollar spot to play at the inauguration? No, just to, to come. Just to, to be there? Just to turn up? Wow. Wow. And your response was? I, I, I didn't do it because I didn't know if I could fix the damage. <laughs> I didn't do it if I didn't know if I could fix the damage. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's such a TE perception statement. Also name dropping Trump in that way he is. That's also TE. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest with you, is, uh, all money is not good money. You got to be careful what you're doing publicly because it's... it's I don't know how you fix that thing. Like, I just was like, whoa, bro. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you fix that. <laughs> like, I don't know if that works for me. You know, that's a pragmatic statement. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's too bad he's sitting next to Lizard Lady, but it is what it is. You two, don't bring me to fix the African American, bro. <laughs> bring somebody else. I'll see you later, right, go. I mean,. What advice would you give to Senator Warren on how to reach young voters? Just relax. You gotta loosen up and Can relax. Up? <laughs> just, just relax. You gotta loosen up. <laughs> Expert in sensing statement, even though it's a joke. Okay, yeah, and then, okay. and then when you stay close to hip hop, is connected to youth culture. Uh -huh. So hang out with me when you're the president. Oh. Right. There you go. Hang out with me when you're the president. That's a TE statement and an SE statement. So Wayfair, my goodness. You heard it here first. All right, that was actually funny. Hey, I'm I wonder if he's like an ESA, like I wonder if he's an INTJ. Is 50 Cent really an INTJ? That'd be cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I can understand that. Okay, yeah, more, more, more SE. Okay. Um, all right, so. He seemed responding that last interview, but, uh, okay, okay, oh my gosh, that's, that's direct, <laughs> that's super direct, oh my gosh, uh, yeah, yeah, he's direct responding movement, he's a, he's a finisher, like, I, I don't care, this guy, this guy is a finisher AF, for sure, let's look at one more interview, but yeah, I'm calling 50 Cent as an INTJ, which is, which is pretty awesome if you think about it, actually. That's a uh, congratulations, INTJs, for getting one of the good ones. Wow, that's uh, that's awesome. But let's go to a different interview. Curtis Jackson, he broke into the music industry as a multi platinum rapper in 2002, but now he's broadened that and become an entrepreneur and a philanthropist, is, is getting ready to release another rap mixtape, and he's here today to talk about that and one of his newest ventures. You're breaking into the home market. If you guys notice, actually, on the top right-hand side of the screen, it shows 50 Cent, I Never Did Any Drugs, which is actually very common with INTJs. 
uh, oftentimes INTJs don't really uh, engage in drug use um, specifically due to expert sensing and fear because they're concerned about the end their uh, any nemesis worried about the consequences of drug use and how they would like look after that because they realize you know if you use meth your teeth are going to fall out you know what I'm saying audio business right tell me about that um, well SMS audio is a project I worked on for a while I, um, I had a, a an experience in that actual category that I hadn't had in any other territory. But I'm happy it happened because I, I had a license agreement that didn't fall through properly and I, I, I don't want to just put my... I had a license agreement that didn't fall through properly, so that's another example of progression. Definitely progression. Uh, he is direct. He is responding. So yeah, 50 Cent is an INTJ. Straight up. Awesome. That's so dope. So dope to have 50 Cent as an INTJ. Uh, wow. Uh, congrats on that one, INTJs. I am legitimately jealous uh, for that one. I'm so jealous. Um, so, but, uh, I mean, I was hoping he's an ENTP, but yeah, no, there's no way. <laughs> I, I guess that makes sense, you know, Kanye West being an ENTP. So, you know, uh, makes, makes, uh, makes a lot more sense. All right. So, uh, 50 cent right here. Awesome, a little bit of a uh, little bit of a little bit of some bidding here, huh? 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 A little bit. Uh, so Childish Gambino, um, Jennifer Stone, Axl Rose, thirty-one, Brad Pitt, thirty-one, but Amber got in first, so we're gonna do some uh, Brad Pitt. All right, so Brad Pitt is next. It's kind of odd that we've never actually done Brad Pitt, but fair enough. Let's do Brad Pitt interview. Let's check this out. Uh, Brad Pitt opens up. I was running. Yeah, no. Brad Pitt and Adam Sandler, actress on actors. No. Uh, and Margot Robbie once upon a time in Hollywood. No, I don't want to watch that one. Ellen reveals she dated Brad Pitt's ex-girlfriend. Wow, that's kind of a, an interesting situation. Interview from 1990. How about that? Why not? And for the editors back at ET, I was just going to get you to say to the camera what uh, your name is and who your character is. Okay. And you can so go anywhere. This is first question. This is a this is a tough one, but. And my real name is my real name is Brad Pitt. I was born with it, and on this show it's Walker Lovejoy. And who and is that he? That was not my pick. <laughs> what a name! And who is who is Walker Lovejoy? Lovejoy. No one really knows at this point. It's just a guy. I don't know. He's a reporter, though, isn't he? Or yeah, for now. I don't, you know, the we're still, you know, just beginning with this, and uh, when you have a lot of writers, it's going a different way. He initiated. He initiated there. Uh, he initiated at that point. Uh, okay, I was initiating. Um, Brad Pitt. Oh my gosh, is he direct initiating control? Gosh, comes off pretty arrogant looking in this particular interview. But who knows? Don't forget, Angelina Jolie, I believe, is an ESTP. We've never typed her actually on the show, but I think she's an ESTP, and he like married her, so he might be an ESTJ, like George Clooney. Hmm. Way in all these different directions, and people have their ideas, and they have their ideas, and so we're still kind of feeling that out. So I guess we're just way on that one. Do you think maybe the TV? Um... Still feeling that out, you know. But I, hey. I, I guess we should wait on that one. Seems pragmatic uh, from that standpoint. Is lacking in, in sort of shows that explore that time, it, since it is so important? Yeah, well, oh, don't get me started on this one. No, we'll go, because it's interesting. Like, put some thought. Okay, well, you know, oh, don't get me started on this one. Okay, that's I initiating again. Go ahead. Well, unfortunately, a lot of television to me is uh, a fast food fashion show, a lot of it. And it's because of money and time. And I understand it has to be that way, but it gets kind of frustrating. Um, because I wish I would spend a little more time with things like that. Kind of wish they spend more time with things like that. I'm not that. paying the bills. Well, no, but it's a... Wow, that kind of came off as affiliative. Interesting. Interesting. And that was also direct, and that was outcome. Interesting. And so far, concrete. It is certainly a personal opinion, which is vital. I mean, that's what you think. That's, that's good. It. So um, maybe you're quite proud then to be involved in a show that you seem to 
if it gets there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, maybe you guys should super chat me all the way to the top to find out where Angelina Jolie is. Then, huh? Huh? It's it. That's the plan. We're not there yet. How old are you? Me? That's the plan. You know, we're not. We're not there yet. That's a TE statement. Thirty-eight. Are you looking good? Fourteen. What figures? Sounds like your measurements. Uh, but do you like wish that there'd been a, a kind of a show like wow. this to watch? For you? No. Not really. No? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't uh, yeah. see a lot of TV. Yeah. I think the producer was telling me. I don't really see a lot of TV. I don't really see a lot of. Don't really see a lot of. A lot of television. You know. Just don't. Just don't really. Don't see a lot of that. You know. Kinds of seems introverted sensing, as well. Keep going. That um, you guys sort of collectively are concerned that this show, that you're treated as actors and this show tackles things and you don't become the latest teenage heartthrob or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we wanted to. Uh... Next question. No, what? Tell me, because that's. Yeah, that's not the, that's not the focus, you know, I'm trying to stay away from that. No, that's not the focus, and I'm trying to stay away from that. Ooh, because that made him uncomfortable, SI, and then uh, adjusting the focus is expert intuition, and that may, that answer that question may hurt his reputation, which makes him look more and more like a philosopher by the minute. Ooh, ooh. It can be hard, though, can it? Because sometimes you lose control. I mean, if someone wants to... What do you mean? Well, I know when on Jump Street, um, I worked on the publicity for a while on Jump Street, and the kids there didn't want to be on the cover of Teen Magazine either, and it really incensed them that people were seem to be getting away from what the show was about. It, it upset. They didn't like it. But it's, you, know, you lose control. It can be hard. What do you have any plans? What may happen? Or? I have no idea because I'm not there yet. You know, just uh... no idea because I'm not there yet because I haven't experienced it myself. That's 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 SI. Yep. I have no idea. Mm. I have no idea. Do you feel comfortable? No idea. Okay, so I'll keep saying that over and over, initiating again. This TE is still direct, uh, very outcome. I'm not there yet, focusing on the outcome, direct initiating. I mean, just like looking at what we have, uh, like looking at just this evidence, if we're going to ignore this whole section right now, he's automatically an ESTJ by like default. So let's switch interviews. Let's see here. Okay. Brad Pitt is right behind me, and he's here, the man of the hour. Hello, sir. You? I'm well. How are you? I'm okay. I'm liking this like casual-ish look today. Comfort. Casual-ish look because like he's dressing for comfort. Wait a minute. Did he literally say the word comfort? Listen closely. Look today. Comfort defines my fashion style. <laughs> comfort defines my fashion style. There you go, folks, from the mouth of the horse itself. Comfort defines my fashion style. Introverted sensing. There you go. That's proof. And ESTJ. Congratulations, folks. Brad Pitt is an ESTJ. Cool. I guess that makes a lot of sense why he was married to Angelina Jolie. The uh, Chase's theory is ESTP. Um, and, uh, yeah. So... Of course, my wife blows Angelina Jolie out of the water in like like literally every way. I mean, you can even check her out her awesome Facebook because like she's literally like loading a gun on the front of her Facebook. I love my wife. She is a fantastic woman. Absolutely. Absolutely fantastic woman. Alright, let's move on to the next one. And uh, okay. Alright. <laughs> Lev. <laughs> Yes, finally, another good ESTJ. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, man. That corset uh, could potentially uh, be for SE Critic, by the way. And she's also a female. So, um, there you go. Um, and 
All right, so next we have, so um, Brad Pitt. We're gonna delete Mr. Brad. Bradley Pitt, the ESTJ. And then, uh, and then, uh, okay, we're gonna delete that one as well. Looks like Axel Rose. Axel Rose is next. Axel Rose. Interview. ACDC style, right? Right? Axel Rose, special interview. Guns N' Roses. Oh, Guns N' Roses, okay. Um, Axel Rose, famous, last words. Interview 1988. Let's see you in the past. Let's go in the past. The bands on the bill, or do you think that you're completely. Maybe only in attitude in some of them. I mean, Ross done all kinds of material. Um, I like Kiss in their early days. I, you know, I think the only thing that we have in common with Kiss now is that you know they like to make money and they like girls. But as far as their music go, you know, basically their music's like second fiddle to their other desires. Our music comes first. Have you got anything in common with them? Our music is just better than those people because we're outperforming them, and I don't give a damn what they think because hashtag extroverted sensing. I'm going to talk about my performance, and I'm going to be direct AF about it while coming off concrete as much as I possibly can, and I do, do not give a damn what anyone else says, and I just don't care. All right. Maiden. I hope not. Why? I don't know. They're not... A, I mean, they're nice guys, but, you know, it's like political organizations. You know, your band's like a political thing, um, and you're... you're your band's like a political thing, you know, it's what they're getting out of it because it's, I'm interest-based and I'm pragmatic, so I'm automatically an SP type because, you know, hashtag, I am an artisan, lol, uh, but I'm also direct AF, constantly direct AF, and I'm also expert at sensing, and uh, definitely seems to be TIFE, which means he is either an ESTP or an ISTP, and my gut is going with ISTP so far, let's keep going, so... Your music or your album is kind of like your political stance. Well, theirs is completely different ours than, than ours, and I think theirs doesn't have anything to do with rock and roll as far as I'm concerned. We're a rock and roll band. Yeah, um, what they do is what they do. I don't know what it is, and I hope to never be like that. What they do is what they do, and I hope to never be like that. That's like so T-E nemesis. That is S-E-N-I. That's also T-I-F-E, L-O-L, and uh, yeah. Um, Seems progression so far, but I want to get more evidence out of it. Um, let's move on to a different interview. Hi, I'm Kurt Loder. Welcome to another edition of Famous Last Words. Our interview subject... There's lots of kinds of material. Um, basically, with all kinds of different reactions in the press and this and that, it was kind of like the only way to... All different kinds of reactions in the press and whatnot. Okay, so that's expert sensing, talking about other people's reactions. Show where we've been and and to make ourselves happy was to just try to put it all out try to put all the material out at once which you know 148 minutes that hasn't really been done i mean springsteen put out a five album box set but it was live you know it had been done over the years most of this is, is new material and there's a couple cover tunes in it is this album going to be also mixed up like GNR Lies? There's going to be a lot of acoustic stuff on it too. There's going to be different stylistic things going on. Yeah, there'll be um, there'll be a few acoustic things. Um, there'll be some songs that are acoustic going into electric, back to acoustic and stuff like that. I actually play guitar on a couple songs for really? the first time. I actually play guitar a couple songs. Okay, that's progression. He's not really talking about the outcome. He's just more really talking about the journey in that situation, and he's responding with the context. Ergo, Axl Rose is an ISTP. And that is at 146, um, at 27, Axel Rose, the ISTP, uh, 146, uh, uh, 27, awesome. And let's move on to the next one right now. That's fantastic. All right. It's, it's been a pretty good show tonight, guys. Had some really hard ones, had some really cool ones. It's nice finally someone asked me to do 50 Cent. I've been waiting on that one for like a long time. A really long time. Delete message. Axel Rose. Nice. 
Um, Axel Rose. Um, nice. Okay, Axel Rose, Axel Rose, Warren Zevin uh, for 22. Gosh, I really want to do Warren Zevin. Um, okay, so Childish Gambino is next. Childish Gambino is next. By the way, guys, uh, going for the show here. Um, super Chats. We're going to close the Super Chats. And uh, unless you guys want to, like, outbid your current chats that you already have, then go for it. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but uh, otherwise, no new Super Chats, please. We're winding down the show at this point. Uh, so thank you for understanding. Childish Gambino is next. Childish Gambino. Childish uh, Gambino interview. Interview. Awesome. Okay. Oh, that guy. All right, cool. Uh, keeps it all the way. AKA Donald Glover. Cool. Nice. People, like people feel as though you have to have something wrong with you in order to mix that people want to believe that that's the thing people I see that all the time where they're just like what do you do what kind of camera do you use what do you record on what is it what do you what do you uh, what do you make beats on what's different from you what's the reason I can't do what you do and the reason is you just don't want to do it <laughs> I think a lot of people want answers Ooh, that was like really informative um, all right Donald Glover. All right. Seems pretty pragmatic, as near as I could tell. It's pretty informative there. And uh, uh, you just don't want to do it. And it's also TI. So uh, my guess is Crusader uh, with a likely being an ENTP. That's my initial guess for Donald Glover. Let's keep going. And people want to tie things up, which is why people were like, he's not having a crisis, or like, he's, he's, he's depressing. Like, people want to label things, and it's like, Maybe I'm just alive <laughs> and that's how I feel. So, and we all feel this way, so why are we bullshitting? I just want to be honest. I think people are afraid to be honest. I'm probably the most. People are just afraid to be honest. Wow, that's a really good uh, TI statement. Secure person I know. A lot of people feel that way. That's the thing, it's like pretending like you're not like that, like that's too much work. I could never be ASAP Rocky. Like, <laughs> like I could never be him because like it's just too much confidence in himself. That's a, everybody's so afraid now they don't do shit, they're just paralyzed by it, they just don't do it. And that's bullshit. It's a dumb reason not to do what you want. You said you never want to work for anyone. Yeah, I don't want... Yep, don't label, that's another TE statement, or a TI statement. It's like, oh, you don't want to work for anyone, that's very pragmatic. Um, very pragmatic, doesn't want to do that at all. I don't want a boss. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need that. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't really know. The internet is just in love with nostalgia because we're afraid to move forward. Like, that's that's basically what it is. Ooh, internet is in love with nostalgia because we're afraid to move forward. That is an abstract statement. That's also a projection, a cognitive projection where he's projecting his SI inferior fear of inf uh, inf uh, of the uh, unfamiliar onto other people. So that's also an SI statement. That's pretty cool. I, I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, very informative, um, for sure. Um, it is. It's like people are just like, that's why, that's what Tumblr is, that it's just like we don't want to move forward because we're afraid because we see our mistakes so fast now. That's the thing. No one wants to have a fucking job. That's I don't want to have a job. Like, that's the biggest problem with our life. Community was my, like, Pretty career. Magic. I loved working there. And then by the end, it was a, a job. job. It's a job. Hot 97 was my fucking end-all, be-all goal. Yeah, guys, like, I totally identify with them because, like, you know, the CSJ community is uh, really important to me, but, like, the second that becomes a job is, like, like when I'm just, like, completely not interested anymore. I'm just not interested anymore. Speaking of which, I'm working on a really cool project where I'm going to be roasting each of the uh, 16 types and going to be releasing a video one a day, basically, where I'm going to be doing some pretty cool roasts. So uh, look for that in the very near future. Uh, if you guys uh, want to check that out, I highly recommend it. Also, folks, if you guys are not aware of this, 
Uh, check out uh, csjoseph.life forward slash Patreon. We are releasing the season 19, uh, how to be the best INFP, a cognitive development for INFP, how an INFP can reach enlightenment. We also did INTP already this month as well. But INFP, the final episode of uh, season 19, will be dropping this month. If you want to get in on that, I highly recommend you guys like actually do. csjoseph.life forward slash Patreon. Grab gold tier. Uh, check that out. You're definitely going to want to be a part of that for sure. Oh, morning yeah. show. I got it. I'm like, this shit is a job. But the problem is people tell you you're crazy for feeling that way. Right. It's like, you found the thing that you're supposed to do. And right. the It's like most people keep growing and wanting yeah. to find things that they love. I'm yeah, kidding. because like I'm a stutter type, you know. He played such a good ENFP as well in uh, the film uh, 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 Solo, the Star Wars film. Uh, really, really banking on that SI inferior depravity and played a really good ENFP because he played Lando Calrissian. I'm to make the best product. I believe the people deserve quality and when they taste it, they see their own value and they, they don't ask for less. I believe in... They see their own value. They don't ask for less because, you know, FE, because I'm a crusader, LOL. And that's my system because I am an ENTP and that's just how it is. So, uh, 15318, uh, Donald Glover, Childish Gambino is ENTP. And 15328, next. Hashtag next. Okay. All right. Yeah, Star Wars solo story lost money at the box office, and until Kathleen Kennedy just decided to jump off the deep end, uh, in my opinion, the writing of that film was the probably the most important writing, the most important aspect to Star Wars lore ever seen in any film ever done, uh, and uh, had some serious, serious connections. That entire story of Han Solo had some serious connections to the new three films until uh, basically Ryan Johnson. And then J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy decided to destroy Star Wars as we know it, which is absolutely pathetic. But, you know, it is what it is. Hashtag, you know, we have to, like, allow all of the uh, snowflakes out there to just destroy everything instead of, like, taking responsibility for meeting our own needs, you know, because, like, why WTF not, you know. Childish can be no. Awesome. All right, who's next? All right, Aaron Cairo is next. Aaron Cairo, nice. Aaron Cairo, interview, cool. Okay. Aaron Cairo, the interview. Taking the load less traveled. Aaron, the Braille squad, board up and set up an interview. Okay. Aaron Cairo gives Scientology 750,000 but begs fans for. Uh, Aaron Cairo reads mean comments. Okay. Uh, sponsor me. How Aaron Cairo created Braille. Okay. Um, Braille origins. Okay. Hey guys, I am Jennifer from the blog Our Urban Playground, and I'm here with Aaron Cairo from Braille Skateboarding. And he's been teaching me how to skateboard. It's been really awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. And I wanted to interview him today about kind of his journey, so to speak, and what happened with him. You were from Montana. Visually, he looks like an INFP. Just throwing it out there. Maybe an INTP. Montana. Yes, a very, very small town in Montana. Okay. And then you came to San Francisco. Yes, a very, very, very small town in Montana. So what year did you come to San Francisco? Let's see, I graduated high school in 2002, uh -huh. then I went to Vancouver, British... Oh, introverted sensing statement, then I did this, then I did this, introverted sensing, introverted sensing, introverted sensing, air in Cairo. Columbia for one year. Why there? So, I went to college there. Okay. So I did one year of film school where I did more skateboarding than film. And then I went to San Francisco from there. Cool. And why did, did you- I did more skateboarding than film. That's a pragmatic statement. Then I went to San Francisco from there. Also introverted sensing. 
to San Francisco? I know that it's a skateboarding town to a degree, but yeah. I don't know much about it. Well, San Francisco is the only place I had been to. I had never been to LA at that time. Okay. Okay, San Francisco is the only place I've ever been to. Never been to LA at that time. Expert feeling self-deprecation. Uh, definitely informative, uh, responding, and outcomes so far as near as I can tell. Now looking back, it probably would have been a better move to go to LA. But San Francisco had this one spot that was a manual pad, and it's manual skating. And San Francisco had this one spot that was a manual pad, and my SI child definitely preferred it because I'm an SI user. Like my kind of skating. So what's, it was what's like, manual skating? It's where you go on two wheels. And okay. You balance on two wheels. Okay. And, and you have to. Have the front two wheels? Either way. Either way. The back two wheels? Yeah. Okay. Manual. Either way. Either way. Whatever you want, man. Whatever you want, Any. Whatever you want or nose manual would be the front two wheels, right? Okay. So I pretty much moved here for that spot, which sounds kind of ridiculous, but I'm so pretty So for ridiculous. one spot on the whole planet? I moved here for that whole one spot, you know, because like it sounds pretty pragmatic if you ask me. Uh, yeah, and that's very outcome focused. So uh, yeah. You moved to San Francisco. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, and then, you know, it was just the only place I had ever been, so I think it was just a little less scary than moving to, like, L.A. And at the time, San Francisco was a big skateboard community. We mm -hmm. had magazines here, and lots of skaters were here. And now, like, that spot is gone, a lot of the spots are gone, and now there's less industry in San Francisco now, I feel like, that's my opinion. Okay than there is in LA, because there's a lot in LA and tons of plazas everywhere and tons of skate parks and all the companies. I feel like that's my opinion. You know, that's a, that's a expert feeling uh, point of view. All right. So that's why I moved to San Francisco though. <laughs> okay. To give you a good idea. I was like in college and I might've stayed in Vancouver, but I didn't have, I couldn't live there because I didn't have a visa. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, Stellar Memer, yes. Because it's a different country. Right. Okay, cool. So then why did you start, because there's, there's different tracks that people take to go professional as a skateboard and yeah. make that their career. So you told me a little bit about how you started doing YouTube channel. Yeah, well, I guess I was, I had a few sponsors that were really good uh -huh. and, but I wasn't going anywhere with it. I wasn't like progressing up in the ranks of those sponsors and I, you know, it was just, kind of wasn't going anywhere and then I had these two video parts that went out and it was cool a lot of people saw them and I, apparently like a lot of people on the east coast were recognizing me and it was cool mm -hmm. and they really liked it some people on the east coast were recognizing me it's Effie's self-deprecation he's not dropping any specific names even though he knows that he has specific names he's specifically avoiding being TE uh, he doesn't want to make himself look more important than he is, etc. It's very extroverted feeling, self-deprecation. But still, like, the sponsor thing was going kind of just, it was just stuck. Kind of just... It was stuck for a very long time. Like, at the different levels of sponsorship, which I, I made a video part of my... I made a video on my channel covering, like, the different levels of sponsorship. Yeah, I watched that. Yeah, so I was stuck at that lowest level. Okay. And I, it, some people just are going to be stuck there forever. And that, you know, that probably would have been me and so I just I combine these two video parts and I put them on YouTube and if it's the first video we ever uploaded on the Braille channel is that one okay and it got a lot of views surprisingly out of nowhere and I was just like whoa this is crazy it was like when YouTube was brand new yeah and it just did really well and it, that was like a wow, shock this is crazy okay. in the skateboard community that was a shocker i never had that experience before tifi so yeah definitely crusader crusader informative responding outcome so he's like isfj or he is intp but uh definitely pragmatic so not an isfj which means through process illumination this man is an INTP. Interesting, interesting, interesting. And he's also obviously very systematic given that he's a crusader. So we have uh, air in Cairo, um, INTP at two hours and 35. Awesome. Well, that's, uh, let's see here. Um, 
that is it for tonight, folks. Uh, thank you all for coming for How to Type Famous People uh, in April uh, 2020. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool that you're getting an INTP who's not a stereotype, um, but uh, it's a uh, fan tight. Uh, fantastic for you all to be here. Um, hopefully you guys are all staying safe given the situation that's out there and whatnot. Uh, but uh, look for additional content to be coming out uh, this week. Uh, I am uh, currently writing like 16 episodes to uh, release in rapid succession since I have a little bit more time. And uh, then I am uh, going uh, from it from there. No, it was an interest because he was focused on talking about the process with which he approaches uh, moving to San Francisco and also uh, like uh, how to use a skateboard and whatnot. Um, so, and, and like the, the system around the spot that he uh, figured out. So anyway, uh, with that being said, folks, uh, you guys have a great night and I'll see you guys uh, next time. Oh, also let me, uh, the other, um, don't forget we got the Ruby conference coming up. Also, uh, Patreon Q and A is also coming up and, uh, we have a whole bunch of other events going on this month. Uh, and I'm going to be releasing a little bit more stuff publicly as well on YouTube for some fun. I'm going to be sh uh, I'm going to be uh, roasting people. It's going to be great. So anyway, with that being said, folks, have a good night.